Let's now look at the last second, the fourth second. First during. Well, it's going from minus three to plus six, and it's a straight line, so the velocity is constant. If the velocity is constant, then you can immediately conclude that A is zero, there's no acceleration. And it goes nine meters in a time span of one second. But it's now plus, plus nine meters per second. So the object first went from positive values of x to zero and to negative values for x. During all that time, the velocity was negative by our sign convention, and now the velocity, it goes back to plus six, the velocity becomes plus nine meters per second. What is the story at the end of the four seconds? Well, all I can say is that x equals plus six. I don't know much more. I don't know what the velocity is, neither do I know what the acceleration is. The plot stops there anyhow. Now I would think that it is reasonable to ask the following question. What is the average velocity, for instance, between time zero and time four? Average velocity. We define average velocity as the position at time four seconds minus the position at time zero divided by four. That is our definition. At zero it is at plus six, at four it is at plus six, so the upstairs is zero, so the average velocity during this four second trip is zero. You may not like that. It may go against your intuition. Of course, I couldn't agree more with you, but that's the way we define velocity. Speed is defined differently. Speed is the magnitude of the velocity vector. And the speed, therefore, always has a positive value. And I will show you now what is the average speed between time zero and four. That is the distance that it has traveled in these four seconds. Well, let's first go through the first second. It goes from plus C six to plus three. So it already travels three meters. Then in the second second, it goes from plus three to minus three. So it travels another six meters. And then in the third second, it's lazy, it doesn't do anything. So the distance traveled is zero. And then in the last one second, it gets very active and it travels nine meters. Notice you only see plus signs here. There are no minus signs, it would make no sense. And this occurs in four seconds. So that is four and a half meters per second. So the average speed is four and a half meters per second, but the average velocity is zero. We could now make a plot of the velocity as a function of time. Let me put here the four and a half, so that I just have enough room here to make the velocity plot as a function of time. I'll make a new one. This is my time axis, and this is the velocity this is zero. One second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. And this velocity is in meters per second. I go up here to plus ten, and here minus five, here is minus six. So what do I do now? I know that the velocity during the first second is minus six t. So it's linear. And so the, during the first second, this is the velocity as a function of time. It starts at zero, you can see that. And when it is here, it has a velocity of minus six meters per second. During the second second, it remains minus six meters per second. So during the second second, the velocity is not changing, stays there. 
during the third second, the velocity jumps all of a sudden to zero. You see how non-physical that is. And so all of a sudden, during the third second, it becomes zero. So there has to be somehow a connection, of course, between the two to make this physical. So in a very small amount of time, that will have to occur. That's why you get a huge acceleration here at that point. Of course, you also get an acceleration here at this point because there's also a change in velocity. And then during the fourth second, the velocity is plus nine meters per second. And so we jump up. Let's make this plus nine. And so we have here during the last second. And again, this is non-physical, so there has to be somehow a transition. And so here you see the velocity as a function of time. Now comes an interesting question. Is it possible if I gave you this, so this is a given, you can't see that, could you convert this back to that? And the answer is yes, provided that I tell you what the position is at t zero, at t equals zero, x equals plus six, and that is sufficient for you to use this information and to reconstruct that. It's an interesting thing to do, and if you feel like it, I would say give it a shot. All right, so far about speeds and average velocities and accelerations. Let's now go to trajectories, three-dimensional trajectories. Trajectories, thank goodness, are almost never three-dimensional. They're always two-dimensional because the trajectory itself is in a vertical plane. And so we normally, when we throw up an object in a gravitational field, you have the trajectory in a plane. So we're going to have one tra trajectory. Let this be the x direction. And let this be the y direction. Increasing values of y, increasing values of x. I take an object and I throw it up with an initial velocity v0. And what is the object going to do? You're going to get a parabola under influence of gravity, and it comes down here again. And when we have this kind of a problem, we will decompose it in two one-dimensional motions, one in the x direction and one in the y direction. We already decompose right away the velocity at time t equals zero into a component which I call v0x, and that of course is v0 times the cosine of alpha, if the angle is alpha, and the velocity in the y direction at time t equals zero, I will call that v0 in the y direction, and that is v0 times the sine of alpha. And now, I have to know how the object moves in the x direction as a function of time and how it behaves as a function of time in the y direction. So here come the equations for the x direction. x as a function of time equals x0 plus v0x times t. That's all, there is no acceleration. The velocity in the x direction as a function of time is simply v0x. It never changes. So that's the x direction. Now we take the y direction. y as a function of time equals y0 plus v0yt plus one-half a t squared. My g value that I'm going to use is always positive, either 9.8 meters per second square, or sometimes I make it easy to use it 10 